Do you hear that noise? It's literally been going on for days and it sounds like someone is typing away on a keyboard. Oh wait, okay, hold on. I think I know what it is. Yeah, it's definitely Elon Musk tweeting about Dogecoin again. Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cody and today I'm wearing my UCSB sweater to celebrate my channel getting 777 views. More importantly, we are talking about cryptocurrency. Yeah, the beautiful intersection between finance and technology. You've probably heard plenty of stories of people getting insanely rich because of early investments in Bitcoin or Ethereum. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about what cryptocurrency actually is and how it works in the first place and how you can start researching and investing in it for yourself. Before we get into today's content, please just do me a huge favor and go mind the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm on the long road to 100 subscribers and I would really appreciate your support. So you've probably been hearing a lot about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin lately, and you might be wondering what cryptocurrency actually is in the first place. It's a form of payment that can be exchanged online for goods and services, and the concept is in many ways similar to how traditional currencies like the US dollar work. It has an agreed upon value, and people use that value to pay for things. But there are some notable differences between traditional and cryptocurrencies. One of the most significant is crypto's use of blockchain technology. Now I'm gonna be using Investopedia's description of blockchain to explain this because I found it to be very clear. A traditional database is built out of hundreds or even thousands of computers to provide the storage capacity and computational power necessary to allow millions of people to access a website at once. This is how large websites like Facebook work. Now blockchain technology uses a decentralized network of computers to verify and authorize transactions and then to store that data into blocks. We'll use Bitcoin as our example here because it was the first cryptocurrency and it's still the most popular. It all starts when you buy something online with Bitcoin. Maybe you wanted a green tea matcha or a vanilla sweet cream cold brew from Starbucks. So you decide to spend 0.003 Bitcoins to buy your drinks. The transaction is then submitted to the decentralized network of computers all around the world that will verify your purchase. The computers do this by solving very complex mathematical equations to test the validity of your transaction. When your purchase is verified as legitimate, it gets clustered together with all the other Bitcoin transactions that are happening around the world into a chunk of data called a block. When a block of data becomes full, it gets added onto the growing chain of all the Bitcoin transactions that have happened in the past. This creates an unalterable record of every Bitcoin transaction that has ever happened, and you could actually look up every single one on blockchain.com. Once your purchase has been verified, your transaction is now complete and you could go enjoy your delicious coffee. And remember when I mentioned that computers around the world verify your transaction by solving complex problems? That's what Bitcoin mining is. These problems are so difficult that they could not be done by hand and they're incredibly taxing for even the most powerful computers. Solving these verifies the Bitcoin transactions that are happening around the world and adds new data to the blockchain. You'll also earn a reward that's usually called a block reward for your help in verifying Bitcoin's transactions, or should I say your computer's help. This reward is given every time you mine one block, and the block reward is halved every time 210,000 blocks are added to the new chain. In 2009, when Bitcoin first launched, the block reward was 50 Bitcoins every time your computer added one block to the chain. It halved in 2012 when the first 210,000 blocks of data were added to the chain, and the new block reward was 25. Flash forward to May 2020 when it halved most recently. The block reward is now 6.25 Bitcoins for every block of the information your computer verifies. The system is going to continue on until 2140 when the maximum amount of Bitcoins will have been created at a total of 21 million. That means that Bitcoin is entirely finite and will potentially grow more and more valuable as time goes on. So given the fact that cryptocurrencies are much more complicated than traditional currencies, why do people even use them in the first place? One significant advantage is the decentralization of the blockchain. As I said before, Bitcoin's network is made up of computers from all around the world and each computer is called a node. Every node has a full record of all the data that's been stored on the blockchain since its inception. If one node has an error, it can easily cross-reference with all the other nodes in the network to help fix its mistake. Because of this, no one person could alter all of the information in the blockchain, and no one computer is storing all of the data. For the information in the system to change, the majority of nodes in the system have to agree upon said changes, meaning that whatever changes do occur are in the best interests of the majority. This allows for crypto transactions from peer to peer, with no centralized third party like a bank getting in the way and charging fees. Another perk of cryptocurrencies is transparency. Because every crypto transaction is online and available for the public to view, it makes it very hard for a hacker to steal your money. It's easy to trace where the cryptocurrencies are going, so while a hacker may be able to remain anonymous, the bitcoins that they take will be easily traceable. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are also partly anonymous, which is another benefit. Like I said before, every transaction in the blockchain is traceable, but you can hold a Bitcoin address without actually revealing any of your personal information. Basically, your Bitcoin address would be noted in the blockchain, but none of your personal information would be stored, so you could send and receive cryptocurrencies anonymously. A final benefit 
benefit of cryptocurrency is the safety of blockchain technology. Let's say a hacker wanted to steal everyone's Bitcoin, so he changed the information of the transactions in his version of the blockchain. The blockchain of every other node in the system would recognize the discrepancy, and the hacker's copy would be cast out as illegitimate. To truly change the blockchain in a meaningful way, the hacker would have to change the blockchain information of the majority of nodes in the system, or 51%. This is pretty much infeasible because it would require an immense amount of time and money to go back and change the blockchain information of that many nodes. In that way, your Bitcoins will be safe and aren't likely to be stolen anytime soon. Now that we have a better understanding of what cryptocurrencies are and the technology that they're based on, we should talk about how cryptocurrencies got popular in the first place. The modern boom really first started when Bitcoin came out in 2009. It was created by an anonymous person or group of people called Satoshi Nakamoto. Its price slowly increased over time until it hit one of its first mini booms in late 2013 and jumped up to about $1,000. In mid-2017, it started to skyrocket in value, and that's when the general public first started to hear about Bitcoin. It was covered by almost every major news network, and Bitcoin suddenly became a household name. I was in high school when this happened, and I remember that this was pretty much the only thing that people talked about for a few days. People made millions as it hit its peak of about $18,000 by the end of 2017. They retreated back to about $10,000 until the end of 2019, when it had another huge boom, and that's where we find ourselves right now. At the time of filming this video, Bitcoin is resting at a comfortable $38,000 and has become one of the most incredible success stories in the world of investing. Other cryptos like Ethereum and most recently Dogecoin have also exploded in value as well. There's clearly plenty of money to be made in cryptocurrency, so how do you open an account and start trading? Because of the massive increase in the popularity of these assets, you have many options to choose from. Probably the most popular is Robinhood, which recently unveiled a new feature to allow its members to trade certain cryptos. But given the fact that Robinhood isn't a dedicated crypto platform, and there's been a lot of recent controversy with them lately, here's three options I think you should consider instead. Coinbase is one of the most popular, beginner-friendly, and safest. They have a pretty extensive list of supported cryptocurrencies, and their website is super easy to use with a clean design that's easy for beginners to understand. They accept money transfers directly from your bank account like most traditional investing services, Services, and they even have their own debit card that's linked to your wallet, and it allows users in certain states to pay for things with cryptocurrency. You also get $5 in free Bitcoin for signing up, and you can earn small free amounts of other cryptocurrencies when you read articles about them and learn how they work. They do charge fees for every trade, but in my opinion, this is probably the best site for beginners that are looking to get into cryptocurrency. Another site you can use is Kraken. They offer support for depositing many types of traditional currencies, whether that be US dollars, euros, or Japanese yen. And there's support for buying tons of different kinds of crypto currencies. They've also never been hacked, and they have a team of security experts to ensure that it stays that way. They actually don't charge a fee to buy crypto, and their user interface is also really easy to use and beginner friendly. They also have tons of guides you can explore to learn about different cryptocurrencies, which is another reason why I think it's a great option for beginners. The last exchange that I could recommend is Gemini, which was actually created by the Winklevoss twins, you know, those dudes from the social network, and that's how they got the name. Clever, right? This exchange has prided itself on security features, of which there are many, and they have outstanding customer support. Like Coinbase and Kraken, their user interface is also super clean, easy to use, and great for beginners. They have won plenty of awards in the last few years, and you can earn $10 in Bitcoin if you open an account and deposit $100 into it within the first 30 days. All three of these exchanges are great options for everyone, whether you're completely new to investing or you're a veteran who wants to diversify with crypto. You can deposit your funds into any of these accounts and start trading once your money clears. Now that you've actually set up a cryptocurrency exchange account and started funding it, how should you go about researching? One effective way is to explore social media sites like Twitter. This allows you to understand the human side of movements in the market, and you might even be able to discover a new cryptocurrency that is quickly gaining popularity before it becomes mainstream. Another great resource is the website CoinMarketCal. On this website, you can search for the specific cryptocurrency you're interested in and find out about any future plans for it. For example, this user looked up Ethereum and found out that it was likely going to upgrade to version 2.0 on January 3rd, 2020. 92% of users believe this, so you can use this website as a way to gauge how people feel about about a certain currency and what people think might happen next with it. Otherwise, I would recommend keeping up on any new developments in blockchain technology. Because this is what the majority of cryptocurrencies are built on, any breakthroughs are going to be sure to have huge reverberations throughout the market. Also be aware of what new cryptocurrencies are coming out and what new technologies they may be bringing to the table. I wasn't really aware of cryptocurrency when I first started investing at 18 years old, but I don't think a lot of investors actually took it seriously back then. As time has gone on, it has gotten more and more popular as the initial Bitcoin booms got everyone really excited 
excited. I definitely think cryptocurrency is worth your consideration in one way or another. I personally only hold Dogecoin right now, and as of filming this, it's been going up and up for the past few days because of good old Elon. While you may not have time to go out and research all the cryptocurrencies in the world, I think it would be very profitable even just to invest in Bitcoin because of the artificial scarcity that's built into the platform, and because Bitcoin is going to become a finite resource that can no longer be mined. I think it's only going to keep increasing in value as time goes on, and I will definitely be opening up a large position in Bitcoin the next time it dips. At the end of the day, I think cryptos are an exciting and revolutionary way to diversify, and I think that you should go learn more about it for yourself, because who knows, you might just become the next crypto millionaire. And that is the result of hours of research I did into the history of cryptocurrency and how blockchain technology actually works. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. In the comments below, let me know what you name your cryptocurrency if you made one for yourself. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you again very soon.